Hello and welcome to the 1 106 of a second photography podcast. We're now at episode 10, amazingly, and today's episode is a short one just with me about DxO Mark and how to use it effectively. So, what is DxO Mark? Well, DxO Mark are a company that have a website that's quite useful for photographers. They do image testing of lenses and cameras and mobile phones as well. So you can use the site to get some really good data and you can use it really wisely. It's a free site and you can find it at dxomark.com. They also produce software. Some of the software is an alternative to Lightroom. They don't have an alternative to Photoshop, but I'm not going to talk about that today. I'm going to talk about using their website to make informed decisions about purchasing photography gear. So how do you use DxO Mark? Well, let's look at using it for lenses, first of all. So you go to www.dxomark.com and they've now redesigned their their site and there's a lot of articles, but we're going to look at the um, their database, really. So click on lenses and in the new site, you'll see that they have lots of reviews, but we're going to click on explore lens database. So you can pick a lens and see all its statistics and see a review of it. So I'm going to pick a can, I'm going to select brand of Canon mounted on a 5D. Now, what's really good is you can pick what camera the lens is mounted on, but I'm going to talk more about that later. So I can put various filters in, like I can filter for telephoto or wide angle. Um, I can filter for prime and zoom because Canon have a lot of lenses um, for that mount. So on the, the top one comes in at the Canon EF 35mm f1.42 USM. And it has the following columns, launch price, launch date, the DxO mark score, which is the really important one, sharpness score, and then values for distortion, vignetting, transmission, chromatic aberrations. And you can put, put it in a compare, and you can compare up to three products. If we click on the lens, we get um, links to articles about the lenses. We get those metrics that we saw earlier, but we can dig in deeper by clicking on specification and we can find a lot more. We can find out if the lens is stabilized. We can find out if it has things like tripod mounts, how many diaphragm blades it has and its weight and its length. And we can find an awful lot of details about the lens. If we click on measurements, we can have a look at a lot of graphs and a lot of data about um, how well the lens performs. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail here. You can, there's a sort of visual map, sort of like a bar chart. There are metrics for sharpness, transmission, distortion, vignetting, chromatic aberrations. And there are lots and lot. Um, oh well, and there's a few more sort of fancy graphs, but I'm not really interested at, for those sort of things. And you've got your, M, it looks like you've got MTF charts where you can change the focal, uh, the aperture or the focal length, but this is a fixed focal length, so it won't be able to do that. But really, I'm gonna focus on just a few things for lenses. You get the score of 26 and you get, and it also tells you which focal length and aperture it performs best at. So for this Canon 35mm f1.4 L lens, it has a score of 26 and it performs best at, surprisingly, 35mm and f1.4. Now I'm going to click on the compare button. I'm going to add to compare because this is where DxO gets quite powerful because now I, I'm looking at an L lens for 35mm I want to compare it to another 35mm, one I've actually got, the Canon EF 35mm f2 IS USM. So I'm going to click add to click it, to, to, not to click it, I'm going to click add and put it in my compare and then I'm going to go to the comparisons. Now what I can do here is I can look at the lenses side by side. What I can do as well is I can look at how well that lens performs on the camera I want to use it with. So I'm going to select for both the Canon 5D Mark 1 because that's what I have and that's what I would put it on. 
there's going to be a huge difference between the price of the f2 lens and the L lens 1.4 and the 1.4 L lens gets a score of 26 and the f2 lens gets a score of 24 so there isn't a huge difference in score between them now bear in mind that I reduce this on my Canon 5D which is a 12 megapixel camera this is where things get really interesting the next metric that I would use is sharpness. Now DxO Mark use something called perceived sharpness, perceived megapixels, and they give it a score in sort of terms of megapixels. So for the Canon 35mm f1.4 L lens mounted on a 5D, it would give a sharpness, it gives a sharpness rating of 12 megapixels. Now this is where it gets um, really interesting because the cheaper lens, the f2 lens, also gets a sharpness rating of 12 megapixels. In terms of sharpness, there will be no difference on the camera I'm using, which is the 5D. There are other considerations like one has um, IS, which is useful, but one also has a lower f-stop value, so therefore can shoot at higher speeds and could be better in low light. But in terms of the difference in price, DxO Mark is telling me that for the camera I use, I'm not going to see a huge difference in sharpness. And it's also telling me that the f2 lens is best at f2. So if I can live with f2 over f1.4 for my photography, which for a 35mm lens I probably can, then DxO Mark has probably saved me £700. Um, just by doing this little comparison. If I had a camera that had high megapixels, it might be different. So I'm now going to look at them on the Canon 5D Mark IV. So now it scored 38 and 37 respectively for the f1.4 and the f2. It scores better on better cameras, obviously. And now the sharpness has changed. Now what's really interesting is the sharpness on the f1.4 is recorded at 24 megapixels and the sharpness on the f2 is recorded at 25 megapixels. It looks like the cheaper lens is ever so slightly sharper. The other thing that's interesting is we can look at how good it is on a crop camera. So let's pick the 7D Mark II because I am, I am looking at EF lenses so the EF lenses are designed for full frame, but you can mount them on an APS-C. But let's see what happens. So they're not doing too well. So they go back to the scores of 26 and 25. And the F2 lens has a sharpness of 12 megapixels. And the F1.4 lens has a sharpness of 14. So on an APS-C, there is a bit of a difference. And that's really interesting. So let's say the Canon 35mm F1.4 L lens is, is the better lens for an APS-C camera. Let's go back to our lenses and see if we can find one that's designed for APS-C and how that does against the Canon L lens. So what I've done, I've taken the filter for the Canon brand off and I'm going to add to my com comparison the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter and I'm going to add the Sigma 30 millimeter as well. Okay, so we've got the Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8, um, which is a lens for APS-C bodies. We've got the Sigma 30 millimeter f1.4, which is a lens for APS-C bodies, and we've got the Canon 35 millimeter f1.4. So, which does the best? Well, interestingly, the Sigma 18 to 35 gets the best score with 27 followed by the Canon EF 35mm f1.4 with 26 and the Sigma 30mm f1.4 comes in at 22 which is not bad. In terms of sharpness the Canon L lens wins at 14 megapixels but just behind it is the Sigma 18-35 at 13 and the Sigma 30 millimeter f1.4 comes in at 10 megapixels using dxo has been quite dramatic because i do like prime lenses and i immediately would have thought that the canon l lens would have been far superior to anything else 
and I would have thought it would have been far superior to a zoom lens. However, that zoom lens is looking really good. And the difference in price and the versatility you're going, going to get with an 18 to 35 would make me more inclined to go down that route if I were selecting a, a lens that gave me approximately 50 millimeter field of view on an APS-C body. So using DxO Mark, I think it can be quite good for particularly APS-C cameras. If you have a specific APS-C camera, you can see how well full frame lenses perform on your camera and you can compare those to one specifically designed for APS-C cameras and the results can be quite surprising. So if I want to know more about these, I'm quite interested in the heaviness now. So I'm going to open the Sigma 18 to 35 and I'm going to look at its specifications. And I know I can see it's 810 grams. And I'm going to go back and look at the, the Canon 35 f1.4. I'm going to look at specifications. And I can see that's 760 grams. So the zoom lens, not surprisingly, is heavier, but not by much. And it's probably uh, a difference in weight that I could live with. I've talked today about using DxO and I'll just summarize really what I've talked about. I would use DX, I use DxO Mark to look at how well lenses will perform on my camera. If I'm thinking about grading my camera, which at the moment I'm not, I can also look at the scores that they've given their cameras or the cameras. They give an overall score, a score for portrait, a score for landscape and a score for sport. Now, the sport one is to do with ISO performance. So the sports value is how high you can go in ISO while keeping it to an acceptable quality. The portrait I think the portrait is to do with color and the landscape I think is to do with dynamic range. It's quite useful and you can compare DSLRs to mirrorless to compacts. Right, I'll compare the 7D and the 5D. I was hoping to get a more modern camera than the 7D. So the 5D has a score of 71 and the 7D has a score of 66. So already I can see that the 5D, which I really like, I'm really good camera, does perform better. So its sports score is 1,368 ISO, and on the 7D it's 854. But um, we've also got values for portrait and landscape, and the only it the 7D Windsor is the dynamic range for the landscape. If I were upgrading to a 7D, I would probably think it's not worth upgrading to a 7D. I'll stick with my 5D. So really, we can use DxO Mark to save ourselves an awful lot of money and make lens and camera choice and make lens and camera purchases that are more considered um, and work with our existing gear. So those are my thoughts on DxO Mark and those are my sort of that's my advice on how to use it. What do you think about DxO Mark? Is this a revelation finding out about it? Do you use it all the time or, or do you not use it? I'd love to know. Please leave a comment so I can find out. So this has been the 1 160th of a second podcast. You can find us on iTunes now all 10 episodes and you can find us on Facebook. Goodbye.